Hi, my name is Alessandro Zocchi and in this video we're going to talk about cognitive load and the so-called zoom fatigue. Well, cognitive load refers to the amount of thought we have to put into a task, actually sometimes even more than one task. Whatever we are doing, our brain is always monitoring and analyzing different stimuli. However, simply put, attention is limited, actually much less limited than we can think. Our brains evolved to focus on one thing at a time. This enabled our ancestors to hunt animals, to create tools, to protect their small social groups from predators or invading neighbors. Multitasking is the enemy of the attentional system. Increasingly nowadays, we demand that our attention try to focus on several things at once, something that our brain was not evolved to do. In the modern world, we are surrounded by so many attention distractors, and we actually want that, as we believe that in such a way, we can be more productive, satisfied, successful, and even happier. However, switching attention so frequently comes with a high cost, as we are going to overload our cognitive system. Limiting such a load is important, as otherwise we risk to live in a chronic stressful state, which in turn will reduce our most precious cognitive abilities. Attention, of course, memory processes, critical thinking abilities, enriching rational solutions, as well as increasing the probabilities of making mistakes. This is an important consideration uh, for all our life aspects, but in particular whenever we have to learn something new, at school, university, at any profession we are in, or even just when we are trying to make a new recipe in the kitchen. Virtual meetings have skyrocketed in the last years, and even more so recently, as social distancing protocols have kept people physically apart. In any educational and professional environment, spending hours per day on virtual platforms to study and work has become the norm. We can define the Zoom fatigue as a collection of physical and psychological consequences. They arise from communicating for long periods over Zoom or any other virtual platform such as Microsoft Teams or Google Meet. Video conferencing is of course a good thing uh, for remote communication. It allowed us to continue to teach, study and work, actually in some cases even more productively. However, some investigators examined the consequences of this activity and clearly they point to both physical and psychological negative effects. The most common physical consequence of Zoom fatigue affect eyes, the back, shoulders, and articulations in general. Headaches, migraines, eye irritation and pain, as well as blurred vision and excessive tearing and blinking are the most common and immediately visible physical symptoms of Zoom fatigue. They are all due to excessive amount of time in front of a screen and sitting in the same position for long periods. The psychological aspects can be even more important, although more difficult to detect. In video conferencing, we might experience a sort of cognitive dissonance due to the fact that users are connected virtually, but they don't share the same physical environment. In such situations, people um, have to use high levels of cognitive energy in order to understand better and recognize all those non-verbal cues which are difficult to visualize because we don't uh, share the same environment. People have to pay more attention to pitch and tone of voices, facial expressions, and body language in general. And all these processes require uh, the mind to work much harder than it would need in a normal face-to-face -face setting. There might also be a greater awareness of being watched when on camera, with the feeling of fee being constantly on stage. Uh, this can be a strong social pressure with the feeling again uh, of the need to perform at our own best. And this can be very stressful or even nerve wracking for some people at least. There might be also long term uh, negative consequences such as sleep disorders and depression. And this should 
uh, lead us uh, to consider carefully ways to limit all these negative consequences in order to take full advantage of the positive aspects of using such technologies. So, what can we do? Well, experts suggest to follow some simple guidelines. Although simple, these guidelines imply a change in our habits. And as you may know, changing habits is never easy. It is recommended, therefore, that implementing a small change at a time in our behavioral routine is always the right path to achieve a big goal. One first step to consider is to avoid multitasking. It burns extra mental energy and makes us less effective in our work. We need to remember that, on average, our ability to stay focused doesn't last more than 20-30 minutes. It can be tempting to do something else during our video meetings, but it's better to resist the urge. Let's remove all distractions, such as our phone, and let's keep the browser windows closed to reduce any temptation. Another suggestion is to assess whether or not a video meeting is really necessary. In many cases, we can resolve some issues through another communication channel. We tend to forget about the good old-fashioned phone calls or emails. If we are exhausted from a long day in front of the screen, we might want to suggest an audio call, therefore, or postpone the video meeting for another day. It's also best not to use video if we are outside our room, as this can be a stressful, counterproductive and even dangerous situation. So please don't video call when you are driving. Another good idea to keep in mind is to take frequent breaks. Taking breaks from long video meetings is essential for our body and brain. We may want to just agree with our fellow participants to turn the video off from time to time. This will allow us for a few moments to get up, move around and maybe exercise our eyes looking at distant objects outside the window. And if we have back-to-back -back meetings, let's block out at least 10 minutes breaks between them if possible. Also, when organizing the video meetings, let's try to make them last less than 30 minutes. If they frequently last more than 30 minutes, it may mean a poor meeting organization or some chronic communication issues among the members of the group. We can also use the famous Pomodoro technique, uh, if we like it, in order to try to become more productive. Another good advice is to hide our self-view on our screen. It's not necessary for us to see ourselves all the time, as it can make us feel too self-conscious and lead to self-criticism. Hiding self-view is the best way to avoid looking at and analyzing every single movement and gesture of ours. It will help us from not obsessing over how we look. Last but not least, let's give us more space. Sitting in a tiny space in front of our computers all day can be exhausting. We can use more space by using wireless earphones, keyboards and mouse, for example. This will allow us to move away from the computer while still following the meeting. An external webcam is also welcome, as we can place it wherever we want and set a more suitable and flexible working environment for us. Good, that's it for this topic. Uh, I hope it's been interesting and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.